Einstein's theory combined with thermodynamic principles. The mass of a 70 kilogram person consists of atoms. All atoms contain electrons. Humans are made up of 80% water. In total there are 20 grams of electrons. I would like to know what an electron is was a legitimate question from Einstein in 1950. It is still unanswered today after 74 years. His opinion from 1923, a theory that sets mass in charge a priori is incomplete. Let's first talk about the electron spin. In the case of fundamental particles, like the mass of the electron, it is an unchangeable internal particle property. In the standard theory of particle physics, the electron is viewed as a point particle. In short, the spin is an intrinsic form of an angular momentum of a point-like mass. Let's assume the opposite. The electron is not a point particle. And the spin is due to rotation of the mass. The spin is an invariant. The same applies to the combination of mass and radius. Insofar as the electron is a charged particle, the spin leads to a magnetic moment. The anomalous magnetic moment of the electron Gs is one of the crowning achievements of quantum electrodynamics. Experimental and theoretical calculations agree at about one part of a trillion. Let's test this model experimentally. We take the experimental data of electron, muon and proton. We take the experimental mass of codata and use the spin to calculate the corresponding radius. Plugging this into the formula for the magnetic moment, we can then compare the values for the gyromagnetic ratio. The fit is close to the experimental values, as it was to be expected. Now to the rest mass and charge of the electron. We first settle on the fundamental constants of nature. There are the Planck constant, the speed of light, the gravitational constant and the Boltzmann constant. If you want to calculate the rest mass of the electron, we need a reference value. The Planck mass then takes over this task. These three fundamental constants C, H, G are related to the mass of the electron. C, H and epsilon zero are linked to the charge of the electron. So now to the main unsolved question. What is rest mass of a free single electron at rest? A theory setting mass and charge a priori is not that solution. The same to a model inventing a radius. We must return to the basic equation of mechanics to connect it with the principles of thermodynamics. This equation is Newton's momentum equation, whose derivative defines a force, F. Insofar as we consider an electron at rest, this force is an internal force. As we can see, the complete derivative over time is divided into five internal force components. These five components will later be expanded into five partial differential equations. I've never seen these five mathematical parts in a textbook. Let's first focus on F2, the second part of the partial derivative. It is a part of a first differential equation that will lead us to the mass of the electron. F2 is defined at the bottom right using the gravitational constant g, mass m and distance function r squared. We define now two new differential equations. Let's come to the main part of this video. However, the Newton-Einstein partial differential equation is my own invention. 
It corresponds neither to the Schrödinger, Klein-Gordon, nor the Dirac equation. What is new is that this differential equation leads to the rest mass of the electron. To do this, the solution function r must be found depending on the time t. As you can see at the end, the radius depends on a generating function c. See my preprint on ResearchGate for further details. The next step leads us to the question, what is the amount of charge on the electron? To answer this question, we need the first part of the Newton-Einstein equation of motion. This means we have to define F1 mathematically and justify it physically. The second differential equation provides the elementary charge. However, to do this one must already know r and m depending on the time t. Let's take a quick look back. In order to derive the mass of the electron m, one needed the generating function r depending on time. This results as a solution to the differential equation. Important. The thermodynamic principles must be applied to this solution. Only this way solves the 100-year-old problem. The generating function r, which depends on time, together with the unity vector, creates a closed loop. At the end of many loops, a spatial torus is created in this way. And this torus oscillates. One possibility of this oscillation when small r is less than big R is now shown in a GIF. The differential equation determining mass provides two solutions for an electron at rest. One leads to the wave radius, small rg, and the second to the particle nucleus of the electron, large rg. With these two radii, we can now invent a model. The result is an oscillating torus with the condition that the wave radius is much larger than the particle nucleus radius. Once again, only viewed from the perspective of the theory, the solution function RT gives two different effective values, the wave radius and the particle radius. The effective value is the so-called root mean square of the RT function. By the way, this value corresponds to the expectation value defined in quantum mechanics. The particle radius is very small, 10 to the power of minus 56 meters. The wave radius is significantly larger. 10 to the power of minus 13 meters. Probably the most important moment in connection with the GR plus thermodynamic solution is the fact that the derivation of the mass of the electron solves its wave particle character using only one differential equation. Notice that the Newton Einstein and the Planck Einstein equation are new in physics. In so far, as the wave radius and the particle radius are derived from a theory. Finally, important physical details that answer still unsolved questions regarding the rest mass of the electron. At a glance, the solution function or generating function provides the mass of the electron, which depends on the Planck mass, the fine structure constant alpha, and the quantum number n. What is particularly sensational is that the fine structure constant arises quite incidentally and is part of the solution. Of particular note are the GR parameter beta and the metric number G44. This means that if the metric changes, alpha also changes. Last but not least, the thermodynamic contribution becomes clear with Entropy equal to Boltzmann constant times logarithm of the state probability W. This means that the probability of moving in the x, y, z direction is one-third. Two important results of the first differential equation are two effective quantities, the mass of the electron and the wave radius Rg. Both quantities depend on alpha 
and the quantum number n. The same to the elementary charge, but not depending on n. Back to the electron model by including the theoretical calculated quantities in the model. The loops are generating a mass torus and the mass torus is oscillating and rotating. Four internal components of the equation of motion corresponds to kinetic energies controlled by potential energy. There are oscillating and rotating mass including the Coriolis movement and the rotation of charge leads to the magnetic moment according to Ampere's law.